Okay, good morning, everyone. And on behalf of the uh, Mentoring and Value Education Cell of uh, Shillong Commerce College, we're very delighted to have this program this very day, at this very time. And uh, we're very happy to have with us here in this program our very uh, well-known resource person, and that is Dr. Uh, Eddie Mukin. And so, Doctor, we welcome you at this time. And on behalf of uh, the principal of Shillon Commerce College, on behalf of the vice principal, the teaching and the non-teaching staff of this college, we welcome you, sir. And your uh, availability with us here shows your uh, spirit of humility towards our students. And we look forward to a meaningful uh, interaction with you. And uh, our students are here with us. And uh, with me here, there's our assistant professor, Mr. Manfred Passa, who's going to help me. And uh, before we start off, I would like to just ask uh, Sir Manfred if the students are ready. So far, I'm seeing only 93 participants. OK. So doctor, we have about 95 participants with us here. And uh, we know that uh, the students are just waiting and eagerly waiting. Because as per the topic that has been highlighted here, it's on the importance of mental health for students. I think this is a very, uh, it's a very apt and a very needful uh, topic that we need and especially our students require today. In a day and age where many students are, you know, they're not only sharing, but uh, looking for counselors to address the mental issues and mental problems that have arisen out of so many causes. It can be family, it can be uh, this or that. So uh, just to remind us that just recently we celebrated this uh, International Women's Day on the 8th of uh, March. And we saw how the, uh, how the, even the United Nations has taken right. the issue of, of women so seriously, the issues of women. And uh, this time when I look at uh, mental health also, I saw that the, uh, that the theme for this year's Mental Health Day, which is, celebrating the, which is going to be celebrated on the 10th of October, uh, it's mental health in an unequal world. So I think we really understand the dynamics of this uh, issue, mental health. So doctor, we give this time to you and look forward to a meaningful uh, interaction and talk with you. So the time is yours. Thank you so much. I request all our participants and students to please uh, unmute your phones. Oh, resource person? Oh, yeah, yeah. Have to unmute. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, good, good morning, everyone. Okay, at the same time, uh, uh, Doctor, let me just interrupt. Uh, for the sake of all our participants, uh, Doctor, uh, Doctor Eddie Mukim is a, you are a, I think, what I learned is you're a consultant psychiatrist, psychiatrist yeah. at Sun, yeah, Sun Care and also helping with the uh, Roberts Hospital. Yeah, that's true. So if there's anything more to that, you can uh, you can share yourself. No, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, so thank you once again, uh, Chairperson, for the kind introduction. I hope I'm audible to all. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I've uh, just your videos. Video. I'm a psychiatrist working in Suncare and also in Roberts Hospital. And I want to thank the the Shillong Commerce College, all the participants the Mrs. Sen, the Dr. Sen, the principal, and uh, all the other members for having a burden for this issue, mental health, which is a very need, something very needed nowadays. And uh, usually it's a taboo, taboo subject to discuss about uh, mental health and mental illness. I think we have a counselor, Dr. Bhattati there, so I think she'll vouch for that. But uh, during the pandemic, COVID pandemic, it's been a devastating time for all of us, for the whole world, for each one of us personally. But one good thing that has come out uh, from this pandemic, I feel, is that uh, you know, this issue about uh, mental health and mental illness has come to the forefront. The stigma and shame regarding these things is uh, less now, even though it's still there. But over the past two years, you know, we have seen people talking about uh, the need to promote mental health, to let it come, not to hide, not to be ashamed to talk about it, and to seek help as needed. So that's one thing that has come up this pandemic. At least as psychiatrists, uh, is something which I welcome. 
And I want to thank also the, once again the Long Commerce for this uh, organizing this uh, program to promote uh, uh, mental health. I'll just be sharing the screen. One moment. I hope it's visible screen. Yes, doctor, yes. The importance see. of mental health in students that a topic uh, given to me. And uh, yeah, I wonder to, to, I think to be more interactive. If uh, students, if they want to unmute also, they can ask questions, you can ask questions and uh, you can write down your questions in the chat box also. And maybe we'll have a Q and A uh, at the end. But uh, just yes, doctor, starting that's now, good. that's good. Importance of mental health in students. What do you? What do the students feel from uh, Shillong Commerce College? Should is it something that we need to discuss? Is it something that is needed? Or we are all busy with our studies after the pandemic? Maybe one or two can share before I continue with my talk. Yes, students. If there's anyone, anyone? who would like to do you feel share it's impo something? important about talking about mental health? in this current scenario. Is anyone? anyone out there would like to <laughs> respond to a doctor? We can have a more interactive session. Absolutely, yeah. It'll be more lively also, doctor. Yeah, more lively session. Yeah, exactly. I think our students are very shy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have uh, Dr. Bharati Ringa with you, no? As a counselor, yes, then. maybe yes, maybe. But has... you can share something about our students, the mindset of our students, or the you know, the overall picture of how our students are. Have you come across students who are you know concerned about this mental issue or have mental issues or whatever it is? But maybe you can just give a line to. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Mevada. Yeah, well, our students is a little bit shy, but they need a lot of encouragement also on a part that, of course, uh, what we find, they really have issues with, you know, uh, mental health issues, I should say. So they really need a lot, a lot of uh, help, encouragement, support from all of us, uh, including uh, uh, from the family side, parents as well, and siblings. And from uh, a college side as well, we are trying our best to help our students. So, well, I would like to encourage the students to please open up at this time, because this is a privilege for all of you, for all of you to share anything. Feel free to share. Uh, this program is mainly for, for you. We are, we are there for you to help. It's okay to come forward, come forward. Uh, to just say something, because this is the best time for you to know more about mental health. Actually, uh, it's it's normal, you know, it's normal to to uh, have a. I mean, if you uh, share something that you know, uh, uh, Sir here, Doctor Eddie Mohan, is willing to you know uh, help you with with this, like to make you more understand about what is this mental health. So I request all students to please participate. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bharati. Thank you, Bharati. So students, if they thank have you. questions, they can just write down in the chat box. We can have yes, absolutely. Yes, later, we can do that. later on. Yeah, so students, students, please do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go on, doctor. Yeah. So mental health in students is something very important, especially after this pandemic here. As I work here in Sun Care as a psychiatrist, uh, previously we have seen that usually most people who come are those who are you know, will have severe mental illness. They are called uh, psychotics. They don't have, they don't realize that they are ill also. That has been the our experience in the past. But with the past two years with the pandemic, we have seen that uh, more of more pe people, those who have come mainly with something called neurotic illness. That means these emotional problems like depression, anxiety, worries, fear, it's been have become more and more common and even uh, suicidal thoughts. And, uh, and, and you know, the pandemic has really affected uh, all of us. And especially the students, the worries about the future, the career, 
the exam phobia. There's so much uh, stress and uh, tension over the past two years because of the COVID. And that's really affected uh, people with, especially those are at risk for mental problem. So one carry home message from my talk is that, you know, for all of us not to be ashamed to say that we have an emotional uh, difficulty or psychological problem. I mean, the pandemic has really affected each one of us, including myself. So we should not be, we should, we should be willing to seek help and be willing to, you know, talk to professionals or maybe just any, it might be a teacher or anyone, if you have any mental health issues, because the earlier we, we take it, it can be managed more easily. So we cannot say that, no, I don't, I don't have this problem. If you don't have, yeah, we thank God for that. But then studies have shown that over the past one year, many students are going through a lot of uh, mental health problem. And uh, sometimes I will be discussed what are the signs? How can we detect these issues? So that these some red flags, so that as we detect it earlier, it can be managed more easily. So that's why the uh, mental health uh, and mental illness is very important to discuss nowadays. Okay, so mental health is a vital component of our day-to-day -day life. I think we all know about that, no? Of course, the physical health also is important. The WHO Constitution, World Health, WHO's World Health Organization states that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So when we say we're healthy, it's not that we don't have any disease, but a state of complete physical, mental, and social being. So not just physical health, but even importance of mental health. I think we all understand that, no? Mental health, if we, uh, if we have worries, if we have depressed, we cannot sleep, then it affects our studies as students. It even affects us physically. You know? People who have depression are more at risk for heart disease, more at risk for diabetes. So mental health affects the physical health. And for students, yeah, as I said, if you cannot sleep, then you're not able to can concentrate on your studies, you cannot enjoy with your friends. It affects the different way of, of our health. So first we have to know what, what is mental health? When we say mental health, what do we mean? So mental health is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her, her own abilities can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work product productively, and is able to, able to make contribution to his or her community. So that is mental health. When we say we are mentally well, emotionally well, it means that we, can, we, we understand our own abilities, we can cope with the normal stresses of life which we face, including the pandemic of last year, can, we can work productively and able to contribute to our community. So that is mental health. So each of us has to look at ourselves and see, are, are we mentally health, mentally healthy? So what are the causes of people, of uh, the factors which lead to mental health? No? Uh, how can we be mentally healthy? So there are lots of uh, different social, psychological and biological, biological factors also. Social factors, no? having friends, uh, uh, supportive family, those who are alone, those who are aloof, might have more emotional problem. Then psychological factors from childhood. Some people tend to be shy, they tend to be uh, timid. Some have anger problem. So all these psychological issues can, can lead to a good mental health or a negative uh, mental health. And even biological factors. For example, any diseases, a disease with thyroid, a thyroid is an uh, is, is, uh, organ in the body, in the neck, in front of the neck, which secrete the thyroid hormones. So, if you, so people who have less thyroid, they call hypothyroid, are more prone for depression. So even the, so the physical factors also affect our emotional health. So when we, someone has a mental problem, we have to look at all the factors, not only just family problem, not just psychological issues, but even the physical or biological factors. So all of us have normal emotions, no? We tend to be sometimes sad, sometimes happy, sometimes irritable, angry, sometimes we tend to be anxious. 
So all these are emotions are normal. But when 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 do we say that we have a emotional problem, it becomes pathological when it hampers our day to day life. You know, when when we feel we feel sad continuously, or sometimes we feel irritable, just feeling angry. Sometimes we feel anxious, worried. We feel tense. If it disturbs us, we cannot able to sleep at night. It uh, disturbs our day to day life. We are not able to concentrate. Cannot study. Then uh, this uh, then we can see that we can have some some emotional problem. And nowadays, like we try to want to remove the stigma about uh, because sometimes even when you say mental health or mental illness, even they use the word mental, people already feel you know. And when we talk about mental illness, they feel they think about severe illness. So yeah, we might, we might not like the word mental, but we can even use like words like uh, emotional or psychological problems, emotional or psychological disorders, which I think all of us go through, and which we can all uh, uh, seek help for these emotional or psychological problems which we face. So the importance of uh, mental health for students, and of course when we say students, I think we mean many college students from the Shillong Commerce College and all the other college students. But then uh, we have to realize that uh, promotion of mental health should start from childhood. Because all these uh, mental illnesses that we see in adult life, no, they usually the, the cause is mainly in childhood. There's a genetic cause, if there's family history, they're more at risk for mental illness. And from childhood, if a uh, child is abused, or they are bullied in school. Bullying is one problem that is really uh, causing uh, uh, emotional problem later on in life. Those are bullied in school. We have found we have found that. So from childhood, it's very important to promote mental health and to prevent mental illness. And that's why now uh, even the government also has made it compulsory for that every school must have a counselor. I think previously, uh, uh, fo focus emphasis is only on the IQ. No, I think you understand IQ, the intelligent quotient. You want the person to succeed intellectually, to get good marks, to succeed in life, which is of course very important. But then, uh, as time has gone, we have seen that just uh, promoting the IQ to be very smart, to be good in studies, is not enough to succeed in life. We have seen many people who have very good IQ. But if they have low EQ, that means eco, eco, emotional quotient, or low SQ, something called social quotient. So IQ is something to do intelligence quotient, how smart you are, how good you are with your studies. But uh, EQ is emotional quotient, how able you are able to control your emotions. Do you have any more negative emotions like anger, resentment, impatience, not able to control your anger? Or are you calm? Are you friendly? Are you able to control your anxiety? So uh, that's emotional quotient. And social quotient is your ability to get along with other people. No, uh, Do you have friends? Are you able to talk with others? Can you speak public publicly? Uh, can, you, can you maintain? Can you make relationship and maintain relationship? Have good many friends and those types. So social quotient is also something which is we need to emphasize on. So this has started in, I think, from school, from for children, so starting from class one onwards. The importance of promoting mental health in school children. So, so that's what so counselors are now trained, the school counselors, no? that they need to uh, detect the ch children who are more at risk. So some you see some children who are more who are more timid, anxious. Uh, they don't speak much. They don't come forward. They're the one who, if you don't help them, will have later on more depression and anxiety. Then other children coming from broken families or children who are tend to be, who are tend to be overactive in school, they cannot sit still. They tend to move here and there. Some tend to be disobedient, uh, you know, lying, stealing. So th these are the problem children. Well, most of them, we just say, you know, they are a naughty child. But then uh, it's not just being naughty, but uh, they need help. And if the counselor is able to detect these uh, children, speak to them, uh, help them to improve their EQ. There's some children who are very shy, who cannot uh, go out and talk. Later on in life, if that continues, no, they'll have problem with doing interviews, 
in uh, you know in the career so to help such children also so more promotion of mental health should start from students from childhood even school students and then to uh, to uh, prevention of mental illness because mental illness from childhood we can detect there's some like i said something called uh, attention deficit hyperactive disorder so children are very hyperactive who cannot sit still then some children they don't able to concentrate in the studies no they want to study but that concentration power is not there then in from children they may have something called social phobia then these uh, depression anxiety can all be there even in school children so it's something we need to detect to manage early and if we can do that then we can promote mental health from uh, childhood itself coming to young adults and even the young adults no? the teenage years from 13 to 19 i think which uh, many most of students are in this uh, maybe about above 18 years i think in this group so it's a critical period in prevention and treatment of mental health disorder the reason being i think is this adolescent period no it's, it's a period when the brain starts uh, maturing there's a lot of uh, brain development starting from 13 14 years the, it's called the adolescent age and most of these uh, severe mental illness mental illness called schizophrenia or bipolar usually starts at this age uh, after uh, usually this uh, 17 18 19 year of age so this uh, this time for the uh, young adults a very critical area to detect if anyone has problem and to manage accordingly so globally an estimated one in five young people experience a mental disorder that's a very big number it means around 20 percent in their lifetime will have a mental disorder and again when we say mental disorder we are not saying that someone will someone uh, sometimes this severe one no? so when we say someone is really uh, psychotic or they uh, out of touch with reality it's not that but it's the disorders which are uh, we can't say mild also, but like depression and anxiety, anxiety disorder, de uh, depressive disorder, which is very, very common even in young people. So these are very common and uh, 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 there should be no, no, there's no, no shame regarding this. Like I said, even when I like the word mental disorder, we can see an emotional or psychological problem, but then it's very common. But then in India, only 7.3% of young people uh, reports having this problem and few access treatment and we'll see what's the reason for that so it's very common that's why it's important to discuss and studies have shown that it's common but then most people do not realize that they have this problem do not seek treatment and as they leave it like that it can become more and more severe it can recur later on and it'll disturb us as we become adults then uh, suicide Again, it's a taboo subject, which uh, most of us would not like to discuss. But then like I said, over the past two years, we have seen that uh, the number of suicide has gone up, especially among uh, students, obviously, because of the stress that students go through, even though all this does, does not come out in the paper. No? What comes the paper is just the tip of the iceberg. But then uh, in my experience, in the experience of the counselors, many people have come talking about you know, suicidal thoughts, that wishes they don't feel like living and they think suicide uh, i think not the leading is the second leading cause of that the leading cause of that in uh, young adults in india is accidents usually road traffic accidents so suicide is the second leading cause of that so on every 40 second someone dies all over the whole world of suicide so it's someone which we need to really not uh, feel ashamed of uh, disregard or just uh, you no know, uh, sweep under the, the carpet about suicide, but uh, you not know, to openly talk about it. For teachers and counselors here, I think some, sometimes there's a fear no? that even we counsel our students or counsel someone, we should not ask about suicide because uh, you no, know, if we talk about that, then you know we are putting the idea on that person. But that is a myth which has to be removed. I mean, we we, we these thoughts are not. Uh, we don't have to implant it on the person's mind. It's already there. Of course, when we ask, it should not be very bluntly. We, we have to do it uh, sensitively, kindly. If we ask uh, the people, do you feel some sometimes no? there's no use to live, life is worthless, you feel hopeless. Then from there, we can go on. 
have you had these thoughts of thought, suicidal thoughts? There's nothing to be ashamed of talking about that. Because it's something that uh, I think if we ask the students, most of them would have had these thoughts. And uh, it is common. It's, it's not that it's, uh, if I have that, it is wrong, it's a sin, or I'm having a mental illness. It's very common. But then she wants to come openly and uh, we should not be shy or embarrassed to talk about this because it's something which is, uh, which can be helped as we discuss these issues. Okay, so like I said, there's a, for the young adults, there's a physical hormonal changes leading to psychosocial, behavioral and sexual maturation during these uh, adolescent years. So it's a time of great change. And especially in the student's time, why are we saying important importance of mental health? Because as we all understand, the era of extreme competitiveness, study stress, academic anxiety, exam phobia has been a significant stressor for all Indian young adults over the past one year. No, not able to study, not having, not be able to connect online and all the stress that students are facing. And now exams are coming. So obviously it's a time of ex extreme uh, stress. And that's why it's important of uh, having uh, uh, a session like this. And these type of stress, I would say when we have this uh, stress, one thing which is really helpful is just, just talking about it. Nowadays we promote something called self-help group. You know, groups where people can just sit together, five to 10 people sit together and discuss these issues these exam issues, all these stress that people go through. There might, be a, there might be a counselor, someone to moderate the sessions, just sitting around and just discussing, just you see, to ventilate, let out your feelings. Just that also will help to remove a lot of stress. So something which we want to encourage in all the colleges where just speaking one by one, Dr. Bharati, to speak in each and every student is very difficult. But having a self-help group where people can meet together and open out about the emotional problem. It's a, it's, it's, it will go a long way in uh, helping the uh, students. Then other stresses you know, for students, high parental expectation, of course, societal demands, anxiety of social disapproval, peer pressure, uncertainty in job market has made the student highly vulnerable to mental health uh, deterioration. I think we all understand that. A peer, a peer pressure, especially, I mean, among the students here in Shillong. No? If someone has a new phone, we all want to, we all want to have the same phone. If someone uh, <laughs> wear new clothes, especially for the, for young girls, no? the body image, all these, they want to you know, uh, imitate the West. That's what, especially our Kasi society, we want to imitate all the Western. And if you don't get what others are having, then a lot of stress and tension comes in the mind. Then there's a time when we have to have a lot of inferiority complex, you know, feeling inferior, looking at other people are doing better than us, identity crisis, you no, know, I'm not sure of my identity, not sure of our sexual orientation, then body stress, body image, need for independence, gadget addiction, worries about career, all these different stress that uh, students can go through on top of the, of the academic stress. So it's really a time of uh, great stress that has been there since before and much more during this uh, pandemic. So it's something which we can, which is really a thing. But uh, one thing I want to say here is that, you know, for us also have this identity crisis, infinity complex, comparing ourselves with others. It's one thing is not to compare ourselves with others, to know that, you know, each one of us has been created as a special person. We have been uh, specially created by God. We are special in our own ways. We have been, we are loved by God as we are. So there's no need for us to compare with uh, us ourselves with other person. Just uh, do your best in your studies, and uh, uh, you know trust in God. Those who believe in God, I think that's the main thing in this time of stress that we uh, go through. And again, like I was saying that not to be ashamed to. Uh, at the end, I will say no. That it's it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to say that I have problem. I'm not okay. To be willing to, you know, if you have, if you have any, if you to uh, any any more elderly person whom you can look up to, it might be a counselor, it might be your teacher, a parent, it might be a pastor, anyone whom you can share your feelings. There's no shame about uh, sharing our problems. 
This is especially important for, for guys, for men. Usually women, girls are more emotional. They're willing to share about the emotions. But I find that, you know, young, young men, that uh, myth is that I have to be strong. Men should not cry. You know? But uh, they, they, they tend to hide their emotions. But then what's the problem is later on, they go into addiction, into alcohol and uh, drugs and substance use to take care of their emotional problem. So as you see for, uh, for the guys here, for the young men here, not to be, there's no shame in saying that I have problem, but to be willing to, you have a counselor there, Dr. Bhattati, which can go anytime, share your problem. And just sharing, you, you, you might not get any, any very special suggestion or special advice. Just sharing your problem, your vent it's called ventilation, goes a long way in, uh, in lightening the psychological load that we carry around us. So something about mental health college student during COVID-19. Studies have shown that around 50% of students have a mental health problem. And suicidal ideation around 25.5% is significantly higher for the young respondents, 18 to 24 years of age. And obviously during the pandemic, no? compared to uh, adults, I think the, it's usually the young people, children, and old people who have the most problem. Young adults, especially because they value greater social connectiveness. No? You tend to, be, tend to be social, you like to have friends, you like to meet people. And uh, because of the pandemic, these are highly affected by the lockdown. There's a home confinement. So as we have found that especially young students, school children, and even college students, because of this lack of social activities has uh, led to emotional problem. But fortunately, this has is less now. And uh, I think we make use of this opportunity to start connecting with our friends, with our families and to, but the sad thing is that I've, I've been discussing with uh, some teachers for school children. Nowadays, school children, they don't know even how to wish the teachers, it seems. Past one month, the school has started. And when the students come to school, <laughs> they've forgotten how to wish the teachers. Sometimes they've forgotten how to make friends uh, offline. Online, they know how to talk with others, but once they meet offline, <laughs> they've forgotten all the social skills. So that's something which we have to <laughs> regain these social skills again. And uh, hopefully as the pandemic stop, you know, the social connectiveness will improve and will help to reduce these uh, emotional problem. So one, one very important take home message of my talk here is about the stigma and discrimination which we see. Like I said, I work in Sankir and recently we had, a, there was a family. The person has a drug, uh, a boy has a drug problem. He had, uh, you know, attempted, uh, he had cut his wrist, attempted suicide. He didn't want to live anymore and he needed admission. And there's no place to, uh, uh, you cannot admit in rehab center. Rehab center, other rehab center, they, he can run away. But once we say to come to Sankir, to the psychiatric rehab center, the family says no, because of the shame. They feel ashamed to come to the center. You know, what will the, what the, what will the uh, community say? What will people say? So that stigma is still there. Of course, it's much less compared to before. But like I said, when we say about mental or emotional problem now, we're not talking about the severe disease. We talk about common emotional, psychological problem like depression, anxiety, which all of us have. So there's no shame of, of uh, you know, uh, meeting a professional or sharing your problem with others. So public stigma is defined as a problem of knowledge, no ignorance, ignorance about the illness, ignorance about what people are going through. Then problems of attitude, you tend to have prejudice, bias, we look down on other people and problems of behavior. Once we have the prejudice and bias, then we discriminate on others. So this, this uh, if anything you remember, I think you should remember this that as a society, we have to break down this uh, stigma and discrimi discrimination against, uh, not to be ashamed of it, even in ourselves. If we have, if we feel we have emotional problem, to be willing to talk about it, willing to meet someone, willing to meet a professional, a teacher, uh, not to be, you know, not to hide the problem, not to say that I'm strong, that, you know, nothing will happen, but uh, not to be ashamed of it, but to be willing to seek help. And secondly, not to uh, stigmatize or discriminate. If we have other, especially, I mean, if you see other people have this problem. Among the students group, no? You might find people, someone who's weird, 
someone who cannot talk properly, does not dress properly, uh, have some weird uh, behavior, they cannot talk, they cannot they talk in a strange way, and there's some of their problems. But then and other people, they tend to you know, discriminate, stay away from them. But those are the people who need the most help. Uh, we don't know what they're going through, you know, the genetic problem, the childhood problem they have gone through, what issues they have gone through in their life. Not, we won't have, no, one, none of us know. We just see the, that they look strange in our, in our, um, among us and we tend to avoid them. But then uh, uh, those are the ones who need the most help. Because that's what we have seen you know, over the past, uh, in, my, in our experience. That one of the causes of mental illness in young children is bullying. People get bullied in school, in colleges, and then they develop a problem later on. It's a very big problem, bullying in uh, school and colleges. So it's something which the students themselves have to, have to take responsibility to, to, to stop this problem of bullying among your core students. To look out for those who are weak, those who are poor, those who have, uh, those who appear different from the rest. To understand that they have problem and they need help, and to uh, remove the stigma and discrimination. So uh, that is one take-home message you want to give to all the students, and especially in your college, you 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 know, you, you have you are very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Badrati. She's a very good counselor. I've worked with her, and uh, she's very spiritual. If you have any spiritual problem, you can even approach her. So those who have problem can easily go to your student, to your count, to the counselor, with, uh, with with whatever problem you have. Then something false. Uh, one more reason for stigma and discrimination is this false depiction in media. I think we all understand. Or the, what the media usually just tend to you know to show the uh, uh, the movies, the news, something which is, of course, been now. So in the media, they are talking more about the mental uh, mental health issues, which is good. But recently, the movie, no, uh, movie they, they say it's uh, the Hindi movie, Kia Mental Hai. Then they change it to Kia Judgmental Hai to remove that, to remove that uh, stigma. So th this type of stigma is still there in the media, which we have to look out for. So, so, so young people do not seek men he mental he health or mental problems due to character features about lack of fear of lack of confidentiality, peer pressure, a desire to be self-reliant lack of knowledge to recognize mental health problem and lack of awareness about mental health related services. That's why we don't seek help. But then I said, uh, we need to seek help. Anything, uh, we'll be looking at the red flags. When, when, when should we seek help? So most common mental health issues in young adults, these are the common things, you know, anxiety, depression, substance addiction, personality disorders, and less commonly is bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. Bipolar schizophrenia is a severe mental illness, which is not so common, but uh, the other, the one above are the very common mental illness which people can have. So anxiety is a normal emotion. It is adaptive since it promotes survival by inciting persons to stay away of dangerous places. I think we all answered. Because anxiety, that's why we study before exams, that's why we work hard. But this anxiety is an umbrella term for all anxiety spectrum disorders, which includes something called generalized anxiety disorder, GAD. You tend to worry a lot. We won't go line by line, but GAD is having excessive worries about the future, feeling on edge, feeling restless, cannot relax, trembling, sweating. You might have panic attack, you know, increased heart rate. So these are some of the, the signs. If you feel if you have uh, worries which keep on coming. Before it was never there, but then what is the worries just keep, keep on coming the whole day, not able to relax, not able to concentrate in your studies, feeling restless, sleep problem. Then you might have a generalized anxiety disorder. There's something different from anxiety is uh, depression. And when we say depression, see, we might all feel sad sometimes when we feel exams or when we, when some, we have, a, have a breakdown relationship. But depression is something which affects our physical, emotional, and social development. And when we say depression, the person will feel sad. It'll be continuously for more than two weeks. Not only sadness, but there will be, you know, you cannot enjoy watching TV. There's a sleep problem. Sometimes you might have suicidal thoughts, uh, uh, less appetite. You're feeling tired, feeling weak, cannot get up in the morning. Uh, all these symptoms, when they're combined together, then we see that the person has a depressive disorder. And these are the risk factors. You know, there might be a family history of depression, parental conflict, 
poor peer relationship, deficit in coping skills, negative thinking, all these can lead to uh, uh, some of the problem called depressive disorder. These are some of the symptoms. If you feel sad, usually more in the morning. When I get up in the morning, I cannot face the day. I'm feeling sad. I feel like crying. And hedonia means I cannot enjoy. I cannot enjoy, you know. Previously, I, I like to play football. Nowadays, I don't enjoy all playing football. I don't enjoy talking to people. I don't enjoy uh, watching movies. I feel if lethargy, loss of energy. So increase or decrease appetite, uh, decrease sleep, not able to sleep at night, feeling restless, agitation. So all these together can, can, can lead to uh, uh, other symptoms of uh, depression. The feeling of worthlessness. No, I, feel, I feel I'm not good enough. It's no use to live. I feel hopeless of the future. I feel helpless. Sometimes feeling guilty. I feel like I'm a sinner. God does not, I will, God will not forgive me anymore. So uh, regarding thoughts of dying, suicidal ideation. If we have these thoughts together, then something which indicate that it might be going to a depression and we need to seek help immediately. Okay, yeah, so we don't know. Okay, we won't go to this. I think lockdown is uh, over now. Looking at some of the protective factors which will help us uh, in this time of uh, to, pre to promote mental health, to prevent mental illness, is to have good coping skills and good uh, personal uh, reliance. Re I mean, sorry, uh, resilience. So, what, what is a coping? What do you mean by coping or coping skills? Coping skills are the thoughts and actions that individuals use to manage and reduce the traumatic and stress coping, uh, stress coping situation. So different ways we can manage the impacts of a traumatic and stress inducing situation are the coping skills. So what are the, uh, some positive coping skills? This is just, we'll just go through quickly, I think time's nearly over. So deep breathing. If you feel you have anxiety, panic, is to just to learn to deep breathe, relieve stress to slow deep breathing. You take five slow deep breaths right now and you'll feel calm and you can feel and you can calm yourself down. Sometimes when we feel have this panic, anxiety, palpitation, it's just taking a deep breath, you know, try to concentrate on your, on your breath. Try to, to distract yourself from all the negative thoughts, all the fears and worries that uh, you might have. Then practice staying in the present morning. There's something called, uh, which nowadays they use the word mindfulness therapy. You know, worrying will not change or help the situation. You try meditation or guided imagery. Just as you take deep breath, just uh, relax, close your eyes, and just stay in the present moment. Listen to the sound, listen to the, your heartbeat, listen to how you're breathing. Not to concentrate on your worries, on the tension that you have, but to be mindful of the present moment. And I think all these things, this breathing exercise, relaxation exercise, even uh, uh, Dr. Bharati will be able to teach uh, uh, the students. Then you think something called CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Skills of Therapy. Remember how you think affects how you feel and how you behave. So sometimes you cannot control your emotions. You cannot control our, our feelings, but you can control your thinking. You know, if, you, if you're having a negative thought, I might have COVID-19. I might get sick. So change it to a positive thing. I will be healthy by taking good care, practice good infection control. Of course, this is about the COVID-19 thing. So to repeat this positive thinking statement several times a day, no? just repeating this positive statement. And as you try to change your thinking, the positive thinking become more positive, then your emotions also become less. So this is called cognitive behavioral uh, skills, which uh, if time permits, we can go through more. So different ways of reframing, changing the way you look at and things in order to feel better about them. In the same way, we just use this uh, technical term of reframing, but no, no, all these negative uh, thoughts that we have to replace with some uh, positive thoughts. Then social support from a counselor or a support group. I have said earlier, a support group, a self-help group is something which we really, uh, if you see like people with uh, suppose people with cancer problem, you know, they tend to meet together and they help each other. They discuss the problem, they share skills, they're able to support each other. 
And uh, nowadays in the hospital in different way, we have these different self-help or support group. So similarly, even in schools and things, you have all different types of groups, no? Your sports group, or maybe your drama group, your debating debate group. You can have something, uh, emotional support group, where people can, without any fear or shyness, can come together and support uh, each other. So this is one thing which uh, we can do in the, in the colleges. Then another way coping skills is to stay active, physical activity. Just uh, being, be, playing football, jogging, going for work goes a long way in uh, reducing uh, mental health problem. Then uh, talking to uh, someone, you know, like I said, just sharing your problem to other people will really help in uh, reducing this uh, stress. Sorry, this thing is about uh, COVID, so you won't know about uh, good infection control. Yeah, so these are a few coping skills which uh, we can uh, think, but I think that time is less. So I want to have more interactive of uh, question answer. So with that, I'll just end my talk, but I uh, just want to emphasize again that uh, mental health is important. So let's not shy away from talking about feelings with one another, with a teacher, with a counseling. And it's okay to be not, to to not be okay, no? You don't feel that we, I don't have any emotional problem. We can we willingly say that, yes, I might have problem. It's not, it's not that I don't have faith. It's not that I don't believe in God. But then in spite of that, in spite of it, each of us goes through a lot of emotional turmoil. And if, if needed, we need to seek professional help from counselors, clinical psychologists, or even psychiatrists, if you feel that we need medication. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, if we have any question and answer, uh, questions. I think any, any, any question from the chat box? Just hold on, I'll just close the... Yeah, you, you, if you have any question, you can... Uh, you can uh, unmute yourself or you can tap in the, click in the... type in the chat box. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. Uh, sorry, I just got uh, disconnected just for a minute. Okay, uh, actually from our students, I think there was a question. So I'm just reconnecting. Uh... Uh, doctor, but uh, also you have anything to add? Maybe you can exactly. also share. I lost the... I lost the question. Uh, Bhatruti, can you just uh, see, because I got disconnected because of the system. Uh, can you just read out that question that a particular student had asked the uh, doctor? Uh, you mean Ronaldson? It's not, it's, must be, because it's not reflecting in my, in my system right. anymore. Okay, let me just check. Yeah. Okay, he was asking this... about his, his concentration in the class and the teacher or something he was saying. Okay. Okay, this, this one from Ronaldson Surong. Uh, yeah, yeah. Respect doctor, why sometimes for me, I cannot realize what I've studied. Like when today our teacher is explaining, but only at that time, I remember the explanation. But when I reach home, it looks like I forget. And I, I started looking in my copies and read again. But there sometimes, also where brains is not working so it is because of our health or what doctor so that's the question from ronaldson yeah, I've seen that, yeah. but there's something also okay so it's something we i think all students go through no where <laughs> you have listened in the in the classroom, but when you come back home and you forget everything. So if it's really disturbing you, I think one reason is maybe it might not, you might have not 
concentrate what the what do you have written down maybe. or maybe not listen properly to what the teacher has taught <laughs> i think if you concentrate in a classroom sometimes uh, you just take notes everything is a spinal level you might be just be taking notes without already concentrating on what the student the teacher is teaching so i think if we really make up our mind to concentrate at that time i think it'll help us to retain our in our memories and once we come back to the and look at the notes again i think it should help us to remember but then if it's uh, something which is uh, even as you try to concentrate also you're not able to do it then yeah you have to look for other it might be you know because like i said in, in depression also one of the symptoms is lack of concentration when you feel depressed you you're not able to concentrate any work your mind is uh, not sharp and active like before so if you have other symptoms like you know disturbed sleep as i said feeling of sadness which continues tiredness feeling anxiety along with this uh, concentration problem then it might be that you are going through a mild uh, depression which will uh, uh, need help and depression is something like we say depression it's not necessary that you know you have to take your medication sometimes i like just share with a counselor just talking whatever stresses you have with other people uh, going for doing physical exercise you no know, uh, jogging or any physical exercise that itself helps in uh, removing these uh, depressed these symptoms and sometimes if, if even if these things does not help then you might need a psychiatrist and uh, sometimes mild medication can be given if for depression so again for the medicine also again this myth is there that the fear of taking medication sometimes feel that you will become addicted or uh, if i need a psychiatrist that mean uh, i'm mad but i said uh, now past two years people who are coming to psychiatrists are many people with this type of disorder depression anxiety which is more and more common so it's once if you meet a psychiatrist doesn't mean that you know you have any any mental illness it might be that you have some emotional or psychological problem which can be helped so so the, the teachers are here maybe they can also add to this problem of not able to concentrate i think the teachers will know better how to <laughs> help the students concentrate in the classroom yes absolutely doctor that's right i think uh, teachers also, that, that's why we have the mentoring we just have a day uh, ms batti gave us an orientation about uh, mentoring to teachers so i think we teachers we have benefited a lot from her orientation like how to understand the, the needs of the students how to understand the minds of the students how to understand the behavioral change of the students so i think we have to go back to that you know the background and the environment of the student why he behaves like this and one thing that i captured from what you were saying is that uh, we should be uh, you said that we should be less judgmental yeah i think uh, i think that's one of the one of the main drawbacks that we have as a as a community where we are so fast in judging people that's true you no know, i think we i think we have to be less judgmental to understand why people behave like that sometimes you judge a student by the way he dresses yeah. oh by the color of the hair yeah. by his earrings yeah. you know by this by that but then sometimes people they, they let out the anger they let let out the angst or they try they they, they try to look look up for a different identity just to be accepted in the society that's true or sometimes they take shelter in that in that new identity no i i just feel doctor Yeah, I, I used to have a friend of mine. I used to have a friend of mine from a different community. She would love, like to color her hair yellow, mm. and then she would say that I am like a European. Mm. So she has been living in that identity, false identity, mm. that being accepted. Like I am, I look the European. I feel more accepted. Yeah. So it has to go back to the family because her parents have always expected her to be the, you know, to be uh, expected to something the best from her. maybe she was considered the black sheep of the family so she took a different identity yeah so i think we pair, uh, we, we teachers we have to be less judgmental we have to understand why students behave like that why they are like that what yeah. makes them like that no i think of course it's a long road ahead it's not yeah, easy because with your uh, experience you i mean what we are saying is just a tip of the iceberg so we really yeah, have to think all of us tend to be i mean our human nature is like that to <laughs> someone strange from us to look down and including me but for joining this field and uh, talking to our patient talking to people and understanding the issues that they have from childhood yes if you really understand what they have gone through the family issues the childhood issues then you really understand them and you cannot be judgmental anymore 
I mean, each and every person has their own history, that negative history that they go through. And what they need is help, not to be judged by others. So I think for me it's easier because I spend time with people and talk to them. For others, they just sit there or just see the person just for one minute, so it's difficult. But then to understand each other person and to actually just bullying, bullying is among students, no? It's really a big issue. Previously, it was not there in our Shillong school and colleges, but now it has started. And something which the students themselves have to take responsibility for this, to fight the bullying. I think it was one there question before, here. but it was not so... Okay, okay. Yeah. Another question, what if a person takes up drugs continuously? What are the measures to avoid this, to be a better person? So it's the issue of drugs. And again, yeah, drugs is a big issue nowadays. We know how it's a big, another ep epidemic similar to COVID, the drug issue. So if a person take up drugs, uh, and if you see that, I mean, I think maybe the illegal, illegal drugs. So, Maybe for alcohol and cigarettes, there's something the social use is there. And later on, you might, it can become an addiction. But for these illegal drugs, like when you say drugs, we mean something called heroin. That there's no social use at all. At from the beginning only, it is an, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's addictive, it becomes an addiction. So there's no question of taking up drugs. Those have, those have not experiment. It's not not to experiment at all. You should not <laughs> don't say that. You know, I, as a young people, I should have fun. Sometimes it's all right. Drugs is something you have to avoid <laughs> completely. Drugs, I mean, something called just weed, marijuana, cannabis, is uh, is a totally total no. And again, and if someone has been using it and you you are having problem, again, you should accept that it is a disorder. Uh, you need help. Maybe, don't feel that no, I can stop by myself. If I have the willpower, I'll stop myself. Because so if you have started drugs, then there's no question of willpower. Stopping by yourself is, is difficult. You need help. So accept that it's an addiction, it is a disorder, and to seek help immediately from the counselor, from doctors, from professionals. And uh, once you have stopped also, to understand that you know the temptation, the relapse will keep on occurring. So even after people have stopped, you have to keep on taking some medication, continue the counseling to prevent relapse uh, later on. And if it's quite severe, the person says, what if a person takes up drugs? I don't know how severe it is, but if it's very severe, if the person's not able to stop, then uh, again, the, this uh, rehab center, there are many rehab centers which you need to stay because uh, stopping drugs, as you know, people are addicted to it because it's very difficult to stop. If you stop, there's withdrawal symptoms where it's very difficult to, to give up. So sometimes you need to stay in a rehab center for maybe one month or two months to help you to stop, to teach you skills, to prevent relapse later on. So that's one question about, uh, I think, drugs addiction. Uh, uh, Dr. Eddie, I think in addition to that as well, there's a uh, smartphone and internet use addiction. That is also yeah. there, especially you know during this pandemic and even after pandemic. So, uh, which which we can see, uh, which we can see, uh, symptoms like um, uh, restlessness, anger, or irritability, and then um, like uh, craving access to smartphone mm. or other devices. So uh, yeah, I find that this is the problem that students are going through. Yeah, there's a question on that. Also. A person addicted to playing games. Like playing games, games, yes. Free Fire. <laughs> uh, no, PUBG, not something P U N G. PUBG. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that, yeah so that is the thing. And uh, again, uh, the, even the WHO, previously when we talk about addiction, no? Previously, there used to be, the addiction means mainly alcohol or drug addiction. But just over the past, uh, one or two years, the WHO has, has put this uh, gambling and uh, video, uh, internet or video game addiction as disorders. That these also are disorders like, like uh, disorder of uh, alcohol. That when you become addicted to it, it's, it, it becomes a disorder. It's not just thing normal anymore. 
So it is a disorder which needs uh, treatment for these uh, video games. So again, for uh, people having this uh, uh, problem, so uh, one thing is if you, you learn to recognize it, that's the first step. You recognize that you are having, you are addicted to video games or to internet or to any media addiction. And uh, sometimes when you stop, you tend to have withdrawal symptoms similar to uh, substance addiction. When you stop the video game, you will you feel restless, you cannot sleep, you're not able to uh, you know, concentrate on your studies. So it's uh, so, so the first step is to recognize that you have a problem. And once you recognize that, it's to sometimes uh, people say, you know, that uh, I will uh, s s uh, reduce slowly. I'll stop it slowly. But then uh, that doesn't happen. This reducing slowly doesn't happen at all. I be, what we usually teach people is to make a deadline where you, you decide to stop uh, completely. We well, suppose even if it's a problem at night where I usually start playing video game, maybe at 9 p.m. you, you give you your mobile or video your mobile or your tablet, you give up, you give your parents, don't keep it with you. You have to take uh, drastic measures. You can't say I'll, I'll keep the mobile with me, but I won't play video game. The mobile is with you. You know the the temptation, that craving will always be there. It's good if you can give off the give off the mobile at night to someone then you meeting a counselor because video game you might have other issues other depression 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 anxiety other issues which uh, which will uh, make you addicted to the video game so to discuss with counselor and discuss about other issues and other topics and sometimes if it's very severe the, the, uh, the, it becomes like an addiction sometimes even uh, medication will be there to reduce these obsessive thoughts reduce the craving that you might have for uh, playing the game. So even the medication might play a part to those who have, who have, who have been diagnosed with uh, this internet uh, disorder. Yeah, so that is one way we can help. But, uh, but anything you want to add on that? Uh, addiction to all. internet. Okay. Um. I think that's all. I mean, you, you, you said it all, sir. I don't have yeah, anything I mean, like more to, to add. Understand, it's the first step to realize it, understand it's a disorder, and to seek help, even for these, if you have to. But of course, prevention is better than cure. If you feel it's becoming a problem, to, to try to cut it down. If you uh, feel uh, this internet uh, video game addiction is, is uh, taking too much of your time, you no, know, to fix the time. If you want to play, fix the time just for that, maybe one hour or something, and then. Uh, fix it, stick to that uh, timing which you have put for yourself and you want not to continue. I can't see him now. Yeah, I can't see him now. Yeah, I can't see him now. Okay, yeah. Doctor, can you see us? Because I cannot see you. Doctor, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, because I cannot see. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Okay, students, you can cover more questions. I think uh, so far they've asked. Yes. So if any other questions, I think the time is already 11.41. So personally, uh, yeah. I think personally, doctor, I, our students uh, are very lucky to have this kind of... Uh, to have the cell like you know the mentoring and the value education cell or the counseling cell i used to remember many years back you know when we never thought of having such a cell in schools and colleges no i think so our students are very fortunate to have this facility in their respective colleges where they can go and share their you know their anxieties their stresses to the counselor yeah that, that's true i think government also yeah, has the uh, importance of this so that's yes, why it's compulsory yes. to have a counselor, a school counselor, I think, in every educational institution. Exactly. Because yeah. I used to remember, you know, uh, when we, whenever we talk of mental health, you no, know, earlier, uh, I mean, quote unquote, people say, pankhle. Oh, mm. pankhle. Huh? Not mm. knowing what is the reason, why is it. So, and the rest 
of the community, rest of the group, also they agree to that when someone says someone of a punkly. So recently I came across, uh, you know, Prince William. He said uh, one very, very, uh, he said one quote and it has become very popular now. He said that, uh, which reminds me of uh, what we used to say in our communities. Uh, he says that men mental health, okay, is not a dirty word. We mm -hmm. all have mental health, mm -hmm. like we do for physical health, whether good or ill. So just like physical health, so also mental health should be treated the same. No? We should not say that, oh, this is a punk of the, I think we should remove that. So I think we, I mean, this this time we are more clear with what mental health is. Students now, they know. So with, I think students should take this message across what is mental health. Just like physical health, mental health also. If we need to address a certain issue like physical health, so also mental health. If we need uh, you know, attention, medicines and care, like physical health, mental health also is, is the same. It applies the same. So I think our students should take this message across to their communities, to their localities, to their families that, you know, mental health is not something that is, should be stigmatized, but it's something that we just need to address in the same way as, same pattern as we do towards physical health. So that's my encouragement to our students uh, from this uh, talk with you. So. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, doctor. No, just really Hello, doctor, are you there? Oh, okay, we couldn't hear you just now. Yeah, I think if you have, uh, do you have any more questions? Yes. Students, do you have any more questions? Even teachers also can ask, no? Teachers also, you can just uh, raise a hand or ask a question in the chat box. You can just unmute directly and uh, share. Right? Exactly, and just share. See, we don't get this opportunity. Not only that we, we, don't, we don't have time, but uh, to call a resource yeah. person like you, it's so difficult. <laughs> you also, you're so busy. So I think we should take this full opportunity to ask uh, certain questions which relates to mental health. So teachers, if you'd like to ask any questions, you can just unmute. Okay, while we wait for that, uh, just to, for the sake of our students, I think uh, they should know that uh, this uh, mental health, uh, it has been, uh, I mean, we should be glad that it has been accepted in the, uh, in the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. Okay, and uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, in 2015, the UN Sustainable Development Goals has accepted mental health to be part of the, uh, part of the 17 goals of the SDG. Now that is a historic step by the United Nations, where the United Nations has acknowledged the burden of the disease of mental illness. And it has defined that, uh, that uh, mental health should be a priority for global development for the next 15 years, which means that by 2030, mental health area should be addressed by all areas, sections of the community, stakeholders, INGOs, GEOs. You know, they should accept that as a, as a priority. And not only that, UN has uh, recently added uh, added this in the SDG 18, which is uh, space for all. So our students should know that with the SDG 18, uh, SDG 18, which comes after the SDG 17, space for all means even students with mental problems, mental health, mental issues, should be part and parcel of the of the system. They should have space in the in the in the institutions where they can you know share their rules. The anxieties and no other person should look at that student differently just as we talk about children with disabilities where they have to be inclu included in the system in the education institution so also such students we know that i think Bhattati will agree with me that uh, i think every every year or every after every three months or six months you see students coming to you and they're increasing looking for help seeking for attention looking for alternatives you know what to do or they're going through certain situations so it means that uh, because of pressure and what the doctor has uh, shared about the reasons what made st students more anxious or the anxiety level is growing higher because of many things because of because of uh, what to say because of economic crisis because mm -hmm. of you know gender imbalances 
and because of family problems, because of parent separation, because of abuses. So this has led to more mental health problems. And I think that we have never seen a day and age where children are being more vocal nowadays than before. Before it was a silent killer, no? but I think now children have come up and they've come up and then share their problems to people, to adults. But to add to that, ma'am, like you said, the problem is uh, quite big yes. and we need also more people to help. So Absolutely. in Sankhya now we have a training program for counsellors uh, starting this okay. year for teachers who okay. don't want to know more about counselling. And there are many training programs, actually like online programs are there, counselling from different organisations, okay. from CMC, the law, from them oh. Oh. So even in Sankhya, so now we have started a counselling course. It's uh, just uh, twice a week where people can come here, get some theory classes, and then mainly, we, mainly practical. Talk to you know, the patients that we have here, how to help them, what are the techniques of counselling. So it's good if uh, both students and teachers are interested. Because I said the problem is uh, is number of people are more having problems, it's getting more and more. So we need more and yes. more of uh, counselors and therapists. And uh, uh, because in, even in, in our state, it's the number of psychiatrists, psychologists, trained counselors is very less. So just short term training will go a long way also to be yes. part of the workforce. Exactly. So those who are interested. I can contact us in Sankhya. Oh, okay, sure, sure. That, that's nice. This Bhattati can tell us, no? Yeah, but can uh, connect I, with I doctor. can inform Bhattati also. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. This is nice because I think, uh, you see, this is where the, the where, where we talk about the support system. No? So for every issue, every every problem that a person has, there has to be a strong support system. So I think uh, this is where you're saying about how others can go for these trainings and they can be, they can provide the support system to that particular person. Because just waiting for the psych psychiatrist, psychologist, I mean, they're, they're too few. Absolutely. They're too few. So even the government yes. is planning to, you know, to increase more training so that people can have some experience about counselling. It's not very difficult. Yes, yes. You know, I, I personally have, uh, have experienced one very good successful story. Okay, a good success story outside. When I was uh, outside the state, I remember I, I, I used to be close to one family where the son had this mental issue. And every Saturday, the mother will go to these counseling classes and then training classes. So she was a real strong system to the son. Hmm. And it took, it took the mother for about four to five years, okay, to walk together with the son. And because of the support system we got from his mother, which she, she got the training from the rehab center. Okay, now the son is doing very well and he's got a family, he's, you know, just such a beautiful story. I mean, I, I've seen their journey and I saw how, like, you know, the, if a good support system is there, there'll be more success stories and children will come out of that situation faster. So I don't think so. <laughs> Any more questions, doctor? Uh, I think your presentation is... Uh, has given us enough information, has guided us enough to take this forward. So, but uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay. Uh, well, I don't have anything more to add because uh, so, uh, Dr. Eri has given us all the information that we all need to hear. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Can 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 doctor share the PowerPoint to but so that we can see <laughs> it's so informative. Yeah, sure, I, I can send and again I can send to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But uh but from the college level, I was just thinking since the uh, 10th of October is the mental health day, yes. maybe we can uh, carry out a campaign or something. We can have a campaign on mental health. Yes, that's a good idea. We should do. No, I think, uh, yes, because uh, I remember last year when I saw that, uh, I mean, of course, people who will be for or against the, the, the country, but then uh, that is the United States. Uh, I saw Hillary Clinton, that campaign on this issue, okay, where the slogan was uh, that the next generation 
the next generation must grow up knowing that mental health is a key component of overall health mm. and there is no shame stigma or barriers to seeking out care so i really like that slogan no so i think we also we can do something like that no we have a campaign and come up with a slogan like shilong commerce campaign on mental health then we can maybe yes. again uh, seek doctors advice how to go ahead with this campaign mm. I think we can start no from this yeah. from our level, which is very important. I feel like we need to promote, yeah. you know, mental health, because like mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Eddie said that, you know, we we need to promote health actually right from uh, families with, with our children, you know, small children. Yes. Know? So not only in college, but also from a college, we can do something like to promote this mental health uh, to all families, you know. So that to conscientize people in our society as well that they should come out of the stigma and discrimination. So yes. campaign is yeah one of the factors that you know can help us do something for our society and for everyone who needs help. Yes, I'm so grateful to the commerce, Shilong Commerce College for that idea. Something's very needed. Yes, October 10th is World Mental Health Day. Yes, and even in June 26. That is uh, the international against, day against, uh, abuse. Day against substance abuse. Yes, substance substance abuse is a big yeah. issue, which is part of mental health. Yes. But June twenty sixth is another day which we can celebrate. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So we will keep you in the loop, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. So I think we don't thank have you, any thank more you questions. So much, yes. So uh, uh, students uh, and all participants, we have come to the end of this session and this wonderful talk that we've had with our respected doctor, Dr. Eddie Mukham, who's the, again, I'll repeat, he's the consultant psychiatrist of Suncare Rehabilitation Center. I think you all know what is Suncare Rehabilitation Center. Where is it located? It's somewhere in Mauro. So the moment you reach Mauro Point there, if you ask anyone, everybody will know where to take you to Suncare. And I would also encourage students, if they are interested in doing research work or, you know, some case studies, so they can, I think it's not difficult for our students to connect with Suncare since we already know uh, the point person, uh, Dr. Mukim. So I hope, Doctor, if there are students will be interested because I teach sociology and we do have projects, we do have research work. So maybe we can encourage our students to do some case studies or some research yeah, sure. work. Always welcome. I mean, not now, but in the future. Yeah, sure. So yes, and also Doctor is uh, working, uh, in, uh, is helping in Robert Hospital. So, okay, uh, Dr. Eddie Mukim, thank you so much for the wonderful time. We respect your time and we honor the contribution that you have uh, given this uh, talk. So may God bless you and continue to use you in your future endeavors. And uh, we pray that just as we've been blessed through your talk, so much so will be the people or the patients who are there at the center that they'll be blessed by your presence and by your care. So, uh, okay, at the end, Yes, so at the end of this uh, talk, at the session, I'd like to thank uh, once again, I'd like to thank the principal, Dr. Sen, for allowing us to hold this program. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Bhatrati Ranga, who's the counselor and, uh, of the mentoring and the evaluate education mm -hmm. cell, and to all the team members of the cell. Thank you so much, friends and colleagues. Okay, your support has made this program a success. Then to all the teachers also of uh, Shilong Commerce College, your uh, your support to uh, this cell is uh, tremendous by you attending the orientation uh, training that happened on, uh, on Monday. So thank you so much. And we look forward to your support again, teachers in the, in the days to come on the mentoring aspect towards students. I'd like to also take this time to thank uh, the IQAC cell, the coordinator for encouraging us to go ahead with this program. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, this is Professor Samantri Prasa, who's just next to me, to my right hand side. He's a technical person here, and he has gone beyond his job description in assisting us and making this program a success. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we also like to thank our dear students who have uh, spared the valuable time in listening to this talk. And students, I hope that you you are all you have all benefited from this program, and please take this seriously. And if there's any help, anything that you've learned from this and you want to take back home or you, you want to address your issues and your concerns, you have Ms. Bhatrati. There's the counseling cell, uh, you know the room. You can go to that room and talk to Ms. And slowly teachers also will pick up when we have uh, selected who our uh, mentees are. 
So thanks uh, to each and every one of you. And thank you, doctor, again, once again. So may God bless you. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day.